Podcasting from the Space Coast in Florida, this is the Dadpreneur Podcast, where we'll feature entrepreneurs, share digital marketing strategies to help grow your business, and discuss the dynamics of family and business. Now your host, Alex Oliveira. Welcome back to the Dadpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Oliveira, and I'm happy to be here today talking to you about online lead generation. So I'm going to take a step back from the structure of the show. I put out 10 episodes over the last couple of weeks, um, and really the format was going to be bring on guests, uh, entrepreneurs that I've known, really successful people. Um, small business owners, uh, management, leaders from different organizations, and then take part of the show to talk about online lead gen, but also digital marketing uh, from a broad view, whether it be SEO, social media, content, all the other channels. And then kind of hook the end of the show with, you know, family and business, which is, you know, for me that I'm working from home, running a virtual business, homeschooling my kids, and running multiple businesses, it, family and business kind of goes hand in hand. And it, and it does for a lot of entrepreneurs too. So I know this will ring a bell, but um, I wanted to take a step back and 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 see what the feedback was for from the 10 episodes that I put out. And so talking to past clients, current clients, employees, uh, colleagues, peers, uh, people in the industry that I share the podcast with, I, I was able to get some feedback. Um, the good, the bad, and all the others, right? And I value that um, because that's how I've always approached my marketing campaigns. It, it's to be able to collect that data, go back, talk to the customers, the prospects, the leads, and find out what they liked, what they didn't, and then sort of implement and optimize based on that feedback. So now that I've had the feedback, I feel confident that um, I'm, I'm going forward, going to be able to chart out a path that will be really useful to you, the listener. And that's very important to me. I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing it so that I can help other businesses to understand how to better generate leads, better leads, but also close those leads and grow their business. That is the goal of the podcast. And then I'll pepper in throughout the season, guest entrepreneurs, um, talk about other areas of digital marketing and and the day-to-day of my um, business and family operation here. So last year when COVID hit, I decided to write a book and uh, when I got into it, I I just started writing and before I knew it, I had 100, 150, 200 pages, but it dawned on me that the the story was sort of not as um, sticky as I wanted it to be. And so I took a step back and said, rather than trying to write the story of my journey in the lead generation industry, let me just write about lead generation first. And so what I did was took a step back and created a 70 or so page ebook called The Ultimate Guide to Online Lead Generation. And the goal with this ebook was just really to educate small to medium sized business owners or startups or would be business owners on online lead generation. Today, as we know, everyone with smartphones, everyone is online. You have to have a strategy to generate leads online. It's great to have word of mouth, referrals um, offline, and you go to face-to-face to shows and conferences, but really, you want to generate leads while you sleep. You want your website to generate sales for you while you're not there, and so online lead generation does that, and it does that whether you're in insurance or whether you are a lawyer, uh, a medical practice, a car dealership. You name it, there's virtually no industry that couldn't generate leads and sales from their website with a you know strong online lead generation strategy. And while there's no shortage of resources and websites and marketers out there talking about lead generation, I hope that 
our podcast in the future becomes the go-to place for online lead generation. We have a great track record. You know, we've generated over 22 million leads over the past 10 years. That is a lot of leads for thousands of businesses around the globe. Um, just to give you an idea, that translates to more than 250 million website clicks and certainly over a billion impressions. In 2013, we built a lead management system based on a technology called PingPost um, and it's kept track of every single lead over that period of time for different industries we've worked with in, whether it was um, legal, insurance, automotive, home improvement, and all the other verticals that um, we've worked with. So when I give you the advice, I will give you the good, but I'm also gonna give you the ugly, things that have not worked for us, things that have not worked for our clients. And the goal is to get you to optimize your campaigns so that you can better generate leads for your business, okay? And I spent some time reviewing the table of contents of the uh, lead generation guide here. I believe it'll be about 10 episodes uh, total. So let's uh, start with the layout. And I'm gonna break it up into four parts to make it simple. First part's gonna be the basics of online lead generation. I'll talk to you about what is lead generation, what is a lead, what, um, why you should do a website audit, why that's important to your lead generation strategy. And then part two, I'll get into best practices to effectively generate and manage your leads. We'll talk about identifying your target audience, your website and landing pages, the workflow and funnel, what that looks like for different industries and different products, how you're going to generate traffic, um, and also do A-B testing. Part three, we'll get into the online lead generation musts. These are the things that you must do to succeed. So qualifying a lead, having the right CRM, compliance, you wanna think about compliance, lead nurturing, what is it and how do you do it? More importantly, how do you measure and optimize a lead generation campaign? And then part four, we'll talk about online lead generation campaign launch strategies. We'll answer the who, the what, the where, the why, and how, right? What is your offer? Who is going to be on your team executing and managing? Uh, when will you launch it? What does the timeline look like? How much will you invest? The budget is obviously probably one of the most important things, budget and time. It, it can make or break the entire lead generation campaign. And then where you're gonna promote it. Are you doing it on social media? Are you doing it on email? Where are you promoting your offer? So we'll talk about that as well. So as I've mentioned before, we all know that lead generation, especially online lead gen, plays a vital role in the success of most companies today who have a website or are online and have a sales team. And what I hear from a lot of small business owners is that while they're, they're familiar with online lead generation and understand the necessity um, to better serve their customers and fulfill their sales teams with leads, they're overwhelmed by it. You know, where do you start? Uh, how much money do you have to put into it? Do you have to be on social media every day? You know, do you have to do massive email campaigns? And th those may be true for certain companies, but you're not going to be in every channel. And so the the biggest challenge that we have with online lead generation is that things are changing all the time. And generally speaking, in the past, if I think of companies that I ran before 2010-ish, um, when social media was really young and just kind of taking off. Um, <clears throat> we could create a plan. Most companies, small business owners, created a plan, a, a, a one-year, a three-year, a five-year with a budget, and they understood that the leads were gonna kind of follow that process and their sales team would get a certain number of leads. I mean, I remember a const construction business that we had between 2004 and 2009 where I knew exactly the number of leads that we would get every month from the mass media advertising 
that we were doing. So we were doing everything from billboards to direct mail. We were doing the Valpac mailers uh, in dozens of zip codes. And so I knew that our team would get a certain number of phone calls every day and those calls would generate a certain number of leads. And online, while it was a, a, a piece of our marketing plan, it wasn't the, the, the number one thing. And today it's the opposite. If you want to consistently generate leads, you sort of have to create a plan and be able to adapt quickly because it's no longer the case that you create a plan, you leave it, forget it. It's changing. Every time the algorithms change from whether it's Google or Facebook, then you're changing your um, plan. And that that certainly creates a lot of um, anxiety for small business owners to to say, hey, wait a minute, I put all this time and money and effort in creating a team to execute on a campaign and halfway through the campaign, you're telling me that I'm gonna have to change um, gears? So it becomes a little bit challenging. And you know, the fact is technology and digital marketing are moving way too fast for you to make forecasts in advance. You know, it's sort of like when you think of uh, cryptocurrency today, you know, you have these big swings up and down, up and down, you know, and you compare that to sort of uh, the equities and stocks that that people are, you know, used to picking where, you know, it, it goes up and you have a bear in a bull market. But with cryptocurrency and the blockchain and everything that is happening, it's, it's just moving so fast. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And if you're going to play in that market, you have to want to move with it. So I would like in sort of the example the same to traditional marketing and today's online marketing to that in that if you're going to do it right you have to have a team that can move quickly and address those issues right if your website is not functioning properly and a, let's say it's a speed issue which seems to always be one of the cases when i come across a new website so okay so speed is in the way of your customers going through the full funnel and having a good customer experience, you, you need to address that quickly. You can't take months to fix that website, you know? And, and you would do the same if it was a physical property. So you have your online store, you have your brick and mortar store. If a brick and mortar store had a, a, a broken door, a broken window, you would fix that as quickly as possible. Actually, I know that because our, our stores, in 2005 and 2006, we had hurricanes that hit the South Florida area here, and uh, we had busted windows and flooded floors. We addressed that as quickly as we could so we can get people back into the store, right? And so online, what I see small business owners do is that they have a bunch of issues with their website or a, a different points of friction within their funnel, and they just kind of say they're going to fix it, they want to fix it, but they don't. And in the end, that just impacts their ability to generate leads and sales successfully. So it's really important because look, the enterprise companies, size companies, Fortune 500s, they have the luxury of working with large teams and big agencies. And now of course they have the marketing professionals and the budgets to do it right because it does take a big team to address the technologies, integrations, and find out where your audience is. So. You know, look, testing online marketing campaigns is is no doubt expensive and it's not a, a sprint, it's a marathon. You have to be in it for the long haul. And not to mention that it, how hard it is to understand the data and analytics and you have to make it your business to understand data and analytics. The insights that, you know, Facebook and the analytics that Google provides to you for free from your users. They're engaging with your website, with your social media page. It's there. It, you have to look at those reports like you look at your um, income statement, balance sheet, profit and loss reports, just like you do with financial statements, you have to do with your marketing reports. You have to look at the analytics, what is the audience doing? Where are they coming from? How long are they staying there? Why are they not buying? If you have an e-commerce uh, website, you're probably looking at shopping cart abandonment and, and discount coupons. Or did they use this uh, code or did they use that code? Which one is working better? And so for small and medium-sized enterprises, you don't have a choice but to create 
sort of a hybrid approach where you establish fundamental strategies of marketing and, and sales, that connection between marketing and sales. So you've got your fundamentals, right? You know your audience, you know how you're going to reach them when you get a referral. And of course, you have your promotional materials, your direct mail pieces, business cards. You go to conferences and you have, you know, um, goodies to give away with your branding on it. Those are all fundamentals, right? And for some, you might still be doing mass media like radio, TV, and, and whatnot. But you also want to follow the, fr the the trends and then move quickly to integrate that with the online strategy. Because to create a successful online lead generation strategy within that digital marketing umbrella, you really want to answer the following questions that um, I'm going to share with you. I, I put together 10 questions here. The first one being, who and where is your target audience? Question number two, what CRM will you use to manage the contacts? That means the subscribers, the leads. What customer relationship management software will you use? Is it Salesforce? Is it Zoho? And there's thousands out there. Some, many of the industries have their own software that uh, addresses that particular type of customer and, and product. So figure out what CRM you're going to use to manage your leads and sales. Question number three, how will you track your online, offline, and referral leads? How are you going to track all those leads and where are you going to put them? How will you qualify them? Question number four, who is responsible for contacting the prospects and when? This one is one that I, I want to hammer on because for a lot of small businesses, they may not have a sales team. Oftentimes, it is the owner or co-founder or office manager who is contacting the prospects. And then beyond that, when do you contact them? Like speed to contact. If I get a lead that comes through my website today, who is contacting? Is it me? Is it my my manager? Who is it? And of course, if you have a sales team, then you probably have a nice structure and workflow for who contacts the lead when it comes in, where does it go down the pipeline, and then when. But speed to contact is very important. There's many studies out there to show you that if a lead is contacted uh, beyond five minutes, if you take more than five minutes to contact someone back, uh, chances are you never get in touch with them again, right? Um, so make sure you have speed to contact. Don't, don't take two, three days to get back to people when they're asking you about your product or service today. Call them back today. Figure out who's doing it, okay? Question number five, does your product or service offer have a clear benefit to the customer? What is the benefit to the customer? Not the features, but the benefits. You need to be able to write that out and convey that message to the customer. Question number six, do you have a process for online and offline customer service? This one is very important because we can all improve our customer service. One company that I follow heavily have for many, many years, I've toured their facilities in Las Vegas is Zappos. They are obsessed with customer service and customer experience. And so I've, I've read their books and um, they are just amazing, both offline and, and online. Now, you know, for offline, Clearly, you might still be doing testimonials and having your team follow up to ask the customer, are you happy with the product? Did you get it on time? Is there anything else that we can do? But you should be doing surveys regularly and you might use a third-party company to do it, whether it's via a phone call or an email. Um, and then, of course, for online, we have the good old review sites, right? There's tons of review sites from Yelp to Google, Facebook, and others. So, But you, you really want to have a process for um, talking to your customers to make sure that the service is right. So for many websites, it means having a 24-7 a chat feature on their website. So a chat button that is not a bot, um, but an actual human being to be able to answer their questions, okay? Now, if you don't have, if your company's not large enough to have a 24-7 team, there are companies out there like Apex, Apex Chat, who you can hire to do some of your lead gen on your website, and it can work kind of hand in hand with your customer service. But you really wanna be able to have, write out a process for customer service so that when things come up, customers are unhappy, then you know how to deal with that customer, right? 
Number seven, this one is really a, an important one for, for the CFO or the numbers person in the company. What is the most you're willing to pay for a lead based on your current lead to sales conversion data? Lead to sales. We know a lead comes in, I nurture it, and they're either gonna close it, turn into a sales or not. So what is your conversion? If five leads come in, do you close one? So is your closing rate 20%? Is it 10%? Is it 5%? And then what was the cost of that lead? So for example, in order for you to figure out what your lead to sales conversion data uh, numbers should look like, you would say, all right, if I've spent $1,000 on lead generation or marketing this month, and it brought me, uh, let's say 100 leads. So great, so it brought you 100 leads, and you said, all right, I closed 10 of those leads, so 10%. So let's say you close 10%, and each of those leads um, are costing $10, Okay, so you've got ten dollars. What you have to figure out with your sales, whatever your product is, and whether it costs a hundred dollars for your product or a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, you have to bake in like the lifetime value. For some companies, if you're selling a product, you're selling it once or a service. Um, it's a little bit different to calculate than for let's say an insurance company or a, a insurance agent because they may retain that customer on average for three years. But either way, you would figure out like, okay, if the sales is, let's say, $1,000 per unit and the leads are costing me $1,000 per month, I'm gonna figure out like how many sales did I make? Did I make 10? Great. And let's say that each unit was 1,000. That means that I made $10,000 and the leads cost me 1,000. Well, then you've got your answer. The Based on that, particular example, it would have cost you $1,000 to acquire $10,000 worth of business or sales. So that's 10%. Does that make sense for you? For some companies, the threshold is 5%. For other companies, I know that many startups online, they lose money when they begin. They're spending 50% of their revenue coming in, fit literally 50% of revenue on marketing. Just, just think about that for a second. You know, companies like Airbnb, uh, companies like DraftKings, they're spending upwards of 30, 40% of revenue on digital marketing, marketing in general, just different ways to acquire customers, right? So, but for most small businesses, you're probably gonna have a threshold, might be 20% of total revenue. You still gotta bake in your expenses, your overhead, and then you're gonna look at what your gross and net profits are. So it's really important, number seven, to know what is the most you're willing to pay for a lead. Because I see so many companies we talk to, they're all over the place. They'll say, well, I'm willing to pay, let's say um, a social security disability lawyer will say, I'm willing to pay $20 per lead. I'll talk to another lawyer who'll say, I'm willing to pay $100 per lead because their closing rate is higher because they have a better process. Right, and because their actual price that that they're charging is a little bit higher, they have figured out a better way to make more money. So they're willing to pay more for leads. I've worked with um, life insurance agents who will say, "Hey, my threshold is a hundred dollars," and then I have another agent here who will say, "I'll pay two hundred and fifty dollars because my closing rate is higher." Home improvement, construction industry, same thing. You know, you've got let's say. Uh, Air, air conditioning company who is willing to pay $150 per lead. And every time they close a sale, on average, it's four or $5,000 for a brand new unit. If they're not doing repairs, for example, um, then they're just going to do replacement. Whereas I'll talk to another small HVAC company who says, oh, I, I don't pay more than $50 per lead, but they don't have a professional sales team. Their close rate is much lower. So you know, at the end of the day, the leads that cost the least are, are going to have the least quality. So you have to figure out for your company the most that you're willing to pay for the lead. But just understand that the, the lower the cost of the lead, that means that that lead gen company or your marketing team, that means that they're buying the cheapest lowest cost traffic, the lowest CPM, CPC, um, and all different um, ways that we 
buy traffic, right? Do media buying. So you have to figure out, but there's a correlation between cheap leads don't convert as much. So you have to figure that out. I'll hammer this one throughout the next episodes because it, it's really important to figure out what you're willing to pay for a lead. All right. Number eight, do you understand the difference between inbound and outbound marketing? Over the years, there's been so much talk about inbound marketing, inbound, um, made popular by the CRM platform uh, HubSpot. And um, it's a great product. They have a great product for managing uh, your customers there. And they also have an, a free email program. But, you know, the idea that I just create content, free content, ebooks, videos, podcasts, infographics, the idea that I spend a bunch of time to create all this uh, content and I just throw it on the internet and then I'm just going to get inbound traffic. It does not work that way because you have to go beyond that and understand what your SEO search engine optimization strategy is going to be, right? You're going to have to understand how are you going to promote it with paid search. Paid search should always, always be a part of the strategy. Am I doing Google ads? Or am I doing YouTube ads, Bing, Microsoft ads? Where am I doing the promoting? Because just simply putting content out there is not going to drive a bunch of leads and sales to your company. Okay, so you got to figure that out. And then for many companies, they're still doing outbound marketing. I work with many companies who have a call center team doing outbound campaigns. Okay, so they're going online and they're, you know, looking at who's opening their emails. They're looking at who's engaging with them on social media. They're looking at who's on their website right now on chat. And then they're making that phone call or sending out that email or SMS to say, hey, by the way, I see you're interested in this product. Would you like to talk to us? Or w I have a coupon for you. Would you like to use it if you're interested in this product or service? So outbound still works. I can tell you that cold call campaigns, it's a little bit iffy. Lots of um, companies shy away from it today um, because it, it doesn't always connect with the clients the right way. And so when you outsource that too, um, your messaging can be a little bit um, tough. All right, we're getting down to the last few questions here. Number nine, how do you nurture leads that do not convert? So think about that. You've got a bunch of leads that come in. And let's say your conversion rate was 10%. 100 leads come in, you convert 10 into sales. What do you do with the other 90 leads? That's a question that you have to ask and figure out how you're going to nurture those leads or which ones you're not going to nurture and just get it out of your system, right? You don't want to be spinning your wheels here chasing people who don't want to buy your product, okay? Question number 10 is what type of content marketing will you be using for your lead generation campaign? Super important. You've got to figure out what content you're going to use is it video is it podcast is it blogging influencer marketing there's so many choices out there today but you got to figure out how you're going to get those clicks to your website how you're going to get users to open up your email and take action super super important so these are the 10 questions that i wanted to uh, basically share with you as a starting point for the online lead generation ebook I'm going to be sharing with you over the next few weeks. And like I'll, I'll end today's episode with um, uh, a little scene from a movie that I really enjoyed uh, over the years. I've watched it many, many times. Um, and it's uh, talks a lot about the, the dynamics of lead generation and, and business and sales. And that movie is Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. So if you've never watched it, you should immediately go rent it online um, or, or or just buy it, right? If, if you know anyone who's in marketing or sales, this movie is a must. It's old school. It was in, I, I believe, early 90s when it came out. But they, they it's a good laugh. You get a great laugh. And um, it's a perspective of lead generation and the process of selling um, at one point. Alec Baldwin is sitting behind a board that says ABC, which stands for always be closing. So kind of, kind of cheesy, 
you know, from back in the days, you know, people used to use acronyms in sales, like always be closing. Hopefully your uh, boss or sales manager is not using that with you today. But, you know, it's got a great lineup. And like I said, a Alec Baldwin, Ed Harris, Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon, lots of great actors. Um, and one of the um, scenes of the movie, and well, actually a phrase that's used over and over and it was very, made very popular in the 90s is, was a coffee is for closers. And you have to watch the movie to figure out why Alec Baldwin is telling the sales guys, right? Because he comes in to basically improve their closing um, numbers. And, and he's there to basically clean house. And you can't have coffee if you're not a closer. And so that's where the phrase comes from. But my favorite scene in the movie is the one where Alec Baldwin is sitting up there talking to the sales team and and he says the following so i'm going to try to uh reenact alec baldwin and glenn gary glenn ross so he says to the guys you got leads mitch and murray paid good money get their names to sell them you can't close the leads you're given you can't close shit you are shit hit the bricks pal and beat it because you're going out that's yeah that's that scene right there but it's a really good scene and it and, and it just highlights exactly what it's all what's always been wrong with um you know sales in general but uh, in this particular case he's talking about the leads that the guys can't close the leads forget it they got to go um and so look many companies they think that their north star or metric of success is increased sales from the sales team and 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 it, that is partly true it, you know without sales the company can't grow and sustain itself long term so it certainly is Im important but the reality is, is that it, it doesn't always work that way anymore because of the way technology works and direct to consumer brands. Now they've changed the way that they, that they interact with consumers because we as consumers have changed our behaviors because of this thing called a smartphone. And so people have a lot of options. They want it and they want it now. And so the, the 21st century or 2021 type salesperson is going to have to be very different than that old school salesperson and people have to adapt. Um, we as consumers, we can research and compare pricing online. We know that. And we don't always need a salesperson. So think of even the car company Carvana, where I can go and have a car delivered to me off of a giant vending machine, right? Without paying a commission. And you're seeing that across many, many different industries. Uh, AI is taking over the way business is done, the way we buy products. And, and you know, there's definitely a place for a caring salesperson um, who put their customers first. Um, but I would say that the ABC of sales for the 21st century today should be always be caring, not always be closing, right? So I'll wrap it up by saying, go out and build an amazing product and service, promote it so that you can generate leads and give your customers some love while you're at it. And then over, like I said, the next eight, nine, 10 episodes, we're just going to go do a deep dive into the uh, ultimate online lead generation ebook. Hopefully you get a lot of out of it. That's so it that for the Dadpreneur Podcast and you with can always, Alex Oliveira. Of email me like what you my heard? team if you Leave have any questions about if you have online questions, lead generation. Email us at listener at dadpreneur.co. You may also visit dadpreneur.co for free resources.